they get up. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Z. Today, we will study anthropologists. Who are scientists who study people. They study where people live, what they eat, what they wear, how they raise their children, and much, much more. People studying people who study people. Sometimes anthropologists study people who are living today, and sometimes they study people who lived thousands and thousands or even a million years ago. Of course, when it comes to studying people who lived thousands of years ago, it gets tricky. Most things disintegrate after that many years, so you have to figure out what life was like using only what remains. But if you're going to study people who lived thousands of years ago, you've got to be clever. Todd and Mary found out how clever. We're on our way to Mile Canyon near Langtree, Texas, with Vaughn Bryant, an anthropologist from Texas A&M University. Some of the canyons there, some canyons down in, a, in, a, in this area, and they have these big holes in the side of rocks. We call them rock shelters. And in these rock shelters, they gave them protection from the sun in the summer and then also from the rain and snow in the winter. And this is where they seem to have concentrated in terms of living. This kind of environment seems so barren, so uh, like a desert almost. How could they survive here? That's a very good question. That's one of the things that we're coming back here to try to find out, to see if we can really figure out how these people really did live into this area and manage to survive. Which one of these are we going to go to? Well, let me walk out here and I'll show you. It's the one down here at this end. <laughs> see, the, see the big one down there? That's the one that we're going to be going to. I've never seen anything like that before. It's... About how many people could have lived in there? Well, we think never more than about 25 or 30 at any time. Of course, we're talking about many different generations. But if you get much more than 25, it gets kind of crowded in one of those caves. There are so many of them. It's well, like uh, prehistoric neighborhoods all over. So well, I'll amazing. tell you, it's very impressive. They, they really were rugged people to live down here. Uh, imagine having to walk around and, and climb in and out of these canyons every day. This was their cities. This was the kind of place that they lived, not like the cities that we live in today. It's really one of the oldest sites down in this whole area. It's where we can find the best evidence of some of the earliest Texans that lived anywhere in the state. This is huge! Can you believe it? Whoa! We can hear an echo! How big is this? It's, a, it's a, about the size of a football field up there. You'd really be amazed once you get inside and look around. Look at these echoes. Huge. Yeah. Whoa. I can't believe we're finally this in this cave. This is really amazing. Isn't this something? This is where they live, right in the center part of the cave. You can see where we've been excavating in previous years. This big pit is what we, we uh, dug up. See right up here, these layers? This is the evidence of the individual zones that represented where they used to live. Each one of these was deposited by a different time period as the people lived here. Take this uh, paintbrush and see if you can find something, brush off some of the material there. Oh, look. It's yeah. a shell. And then, that's, that's really nice. They, they, these are snails that live all over this canyon and up on top. They sometimes crawl in these caves, too, to get cool. This is a piece of a plant material. Here's a piece of cactus. This is some ah. of the stuff that you find here. And you can see all of this fiber all along in here. Here's another piece of cactus up here. This is what it looks like when it's thousands of years old. Have you notice how dry it is? Oh, oh well, don't worry. It's almost like wood. It feels so hard. Yeah. And all of these things were things that were left behind by these prehistoric people and it's remained preserved because it's so dry down here. What, did they just throw it all around? Or? Well, it was kind of like a big garbage dump. When they finished eating or if they were using this for something, they would just pitch it around their campfires and it sort of accumulated. And this is where all the deposit in these caves come from. It's from the people that used to live here. Wow. Well, how can you be certain that they ate something like that? Well, that's very difficult. If we just find it in the site, you know, it could have been brought in here by an animal or it could have blown in. We can't be certain that man ate it. The only way we really know if they ate it is if we can prove that it went through their digestive system. Well, how can you do that? Well, what you really have to do is try to find one of their toilet areas and excavate it. Well, is there one here? 
Yeah, generally, when you dig sites like this in a dry carry in a dry area, you can sometimes file in the toilet areas, and they're generally down at the ends of the cave. This is the center part where they live. The mm -hmm. toilets would be towards either end. Well, should we take a look? Yeah, why don't we? It's yeah. over here. Dusty. Yeah, look how dusty it is. This was where we excavated before. This was one of the toilet areas that we were able to identify down at this end of the site. In fact, the last time we were here, we found some stuff right over here. Maybe you want to take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You can take the trowel. Maybe we can find something. Okay. Just brush away. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh man, it looks wait right here. Take, be careful though. Don't break it. Okay. You got it. Yeah. What is this? Oh yeah. What you'll, is this? You'll never guess. Looks like a lump to me. Well, I'll tell you, that's the stuff we generally flush down the toilet today. What? <laughs> you mean this is 6,000-year-old? You got it. That's what it is. from a toilet? Well, yeah, but you see, they didn't have toilets, so they just usually came to one end of the cave, and they just use that as their toilet. Real? It doesn't really look like No, it, not at all. Well, mm. look some more. Maybe you might find wait, another one. Wait a minute. I think, I think there's something here. Oh my gosh, it's big. <laughs> this looks more real. That's a good one. Oh my goodness. Brush it off. And it's okay to touch it now. Oh yeah, because you see it's so old that the bacteria and all the germs that were in it, they've all died a long time ago. And wow. so from this stuff, you can tell what they ate, what the people ate? Yes, we can't do it here. This is what we have to do back in the laboratory. We analyze this and find out what's in it and find out exactly what they ate and how they prepared their foods and all of the kinds of things that go into making a diet. Let me take this one and this other one back with us and we'll go back to the lab and take a look at them. We went back to Vaughn's lab at the university. That's uh, the, the first coprolite, and here is the, here's the other one that we... Coprolites are what scientists call fossilized feces. What you're looking at here are the undigested foods that these people ate. This is what is left after their systems <laughs> used the calories and everything so inside. Now that we've got it cut in half, let's save this portion for later. And the reason that we have this kind of material to study is because normally enzymes and other kinds of chemicals in the system will digest foods, but this represents the very tough parts of plant fibers and parts of animal bones that could not get digested, and that's why it went and passed through. Next, we want to put this material in that solution right over there. This is trisodium phosphate, which is a very strong detergent, and what this will do is help make this material nice and soft and much more easy to study. Okay, to put it in right now? Yes, go okay. ahead and just put it right in there. Now what we want to do is cover the top to make sure that nothing falls in. So why don't you go ahead and put that over the top. This is a type of paraffin, and you just put it over there. Paraffin is wax? Yeah, it's a type of wax. And just go ahead and cup your hands over it. Right. right. So we're finished with this sample right now. There's nothing more that we can do with it because it has to stay in this solution for at least a few days, sometimes even longer, before it's soft enough to work with. Here's a sample that we started working on last week. Here's a way that we can determine whether or not it's human. Go ahead and take a sniff. Oh. Oh. Why does that smell so bad? Yeah, isn't that terrible? Oh, Why does it have to smell like that? <laughs> what happens is when we put this, when we put the feces into this solution, it brings back the original state and also creates gases and it's those gases that make it smell so terrible. We've studied a lot of fecal material, and there's no fecal material that smells nearly as strong as human stuff. Why don't we look at some material that I got out of another one of the human feces from the same area? Oh, wow. Look at this. This is some of the material that came out of other fecal samples from that same region. These look like little bones. Yeah, look at this. This looks like hair. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What, what these represent are the little bones and hair from some of the small animals that live out in that area. For example, these look like they're from rodents and pack rats and mice. So 6,000 years ago, people ate mice and rodents <laughs> and things like that? They sure did. They ate whatever they could find, whatever was available. Yeah. 
Quite a different diet from today. Yeah. Here's one that's particularly interesting. This right here is the jaw of a lizard. That's a lizard jaw right there. Wow, they ate lizards? Yeah. Lizards? Well, how do you know it's a lizard jaw? Well, we can tell by the bone structure and also by the teeth. Oh, yes, there's some little yeah. teeth right there. Look at this. Is this a pot or something? Actually, that's an onion bulb. This is one of the things that these people down here ate. Here's another, here's some other stuff. Look at this material. Oh, oh that looks like... It is. Yeah, it's like one of the things that we also discovered is that these people ate all sorts of insects. So they ate small animals, they ate all kinds of plant material, but they also relied on insects as well. 6,000 years ago, people ate plants, lizards, even bugs. And we know because we can analyze what they left behind. Well, I learned a new word today. You mean the word for feces. Anthropologists certainly study some strange things. Of course, feces aren't the only clues to what ancient people were like. Sometimes scientists find buried bodies, which give them an idea of what kind of diseases people had, how long they lived, and even what they thought about religion and death. Or sometimes, scientists find the ruins of ancient towns. The things that remain help scientists piece together a picture of what life was like back then. It makes you wonder what future anthropologists will think about us. Hmm. What do you think they'll think of this, then? Anthropologists are people who study people. People who are living today, and people who lived thousands of years ago. To find out about people who lived long ago, sometimes anthropologists have to study some pretty strange stuff. But even fossilized feces can give scientists clues to what life was like in the past. Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. To purchase video cassettes and a teacher's guide for programs in this series, call 800-228-4630.